So, thank you for being here. My name is uh, Guilherme, and I'm representing QX, the Quite Universal Cir Circuit Simulator. As a side note, the first name was actually Qt from the Qt framework, but they got a message that, well, it's not related to Qt, please change the name. So they changed to Quite Universal Circuit Simulator. So my talk is about uh, an overview and the status of the development and some remarks. And if time allows, I will show you some a short demo of what the tool is about. So the project started in 2003. It was created in uh, uh, TU Berlin by Michael Magraf and Stefan Jan. The first one created the user interface. The second one created the, the solver or the, the engine. It was from the beginning uh, GPL 2 plus. To date, it has more than 20 contributors. It's translated into about 20 languages. It's cross-platform. And the user base is, is varied. It's from education, from researchers, uh, hobbyists, and, and even the industry. You have some stats here for the website that was there from uh, 2005, uh, number of downloads. This is from SourceForge where the code is hosted since the beginning, the binaries and the source, the tarballs. And on the graph below, we have uh, the count for, for Windows binaries that were released like 13 days ago. So we have roughly yeah, 400, 300 downloads weekly for this part with the Windows binary. And uh, I mentioned that uh, the original creators, they are not no longer active on the project. Around 2000, 11, 12, they, they, they dropped the project, so it went orphan, and, and the community adopted it. So, The main features, it's basically a schematic capture, a simulator, and it has data visualization built in. It has an equation system for pre- and post-processing of the, the signals. It has a component library, which is also parameterized with uh, common components. And it has also design and synthesis tools. For modeling, uh, if you want to write models, it has uh, some, some feature to import, spice netlists. It's quite limited on the constructs that it can handle. It has a built-in component that's called <coughs> equation-defined device, which is quite powerful because you can really write, rewrite the equations for, say, a transistor model in this kind of uh, even graphical fashion, which is quite, quite, quite handy for development. And it also has a very log a model builder or, or loader. And it has some process, yeah, post-processing capability that you can export data and, and yeah, NuCap or Python or Octave. And the dependencies that we have, it's uh, C++, Qt4. We're still struggling to remove Qt3 from, from the source, but we are working on that. It deals with auto tools and CMake and yeah, Jupyter for, for, the, for, for, the, for the simulator and uh, the parsers are also written in uh, FlexBison. We depend on ADMS for the very log A part, and the documentation, most of it is written in LaTeX. Um, there is some experimental work, or I would say external work, that's not in the main line, which is this uh, fork. It's called uh, QXS, which is by Vadim uh, Kuznetsov and, and Mike Brinson, the first one from Russia, the second one from UK, which is a pretty full-featured Spice front-end based on the QX uh, schematic capture. It can work with ng-spice, Zeiss, and spice opus. They made up uh, very log A generators that work with these equation-defined devices that you can uh, make your device graphically and then generate a very log A code. They also made recently some extensions for x-spice, so they can also, in a similar fashion, make C code that can be linked into ng-spice, for instance, and spice opus, I guess. Uh, the previous speaker, Felix, mentioned uh, GNUX Ator, which is one before that he started to make a replacement engine based on GNU Cap for uh, uh, QX Ator. And there is also an effort that we saw this year. Um, this user, uh, he, he, he has a tool that translates into GSKIM, and he managed to, to import the schematics from QX to, into a GSKIM. So that's uh, interesting. So for support for the project, we have the main website. 
At the moment we have, I count six active maintainers or developers. It's me, it's Claudio, that's in Italy, Vadim in Russia, Felix that's here, that's located in UK now, but uh, from Germany. Andres that's in, in Spain, and Mike Brinson, Brinson that's uh, in UK. We have, uh, I think it's a quite good documentation, especially the tutorials and the technical manual. Uh, you can find on the website, they are very well written uh, uh, and cover quite a lot of ground. Um, we have, yeah, a traditional, uh, we have uh, uh, most things on, on SourceForge, uh, for example, the binaries. We have the Git repository, but we are gradually phasing it out in favor of, of GitHub. We still have the issue tracker enabled there, and the forum is uh, uh, sometimes active, and the mailing list are also hosted there. On GitHub, most of the work is happening there now, and most of the issues are also there. We ported the wiki from SourceForge when it was disabled into GitHub, and we, from there we also enable continuous uh, integration with Travis and AppVayor for Linux, OS X, and, 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 and Windows. So if you look into the package, what kind of tools do you have there? As graphical in interface, you have QX, which is the schematic capture, and then you have design tools or helpers that is for active filter, uh, attenuator, attenuators, passive attenuators. It has a built-in editor that we are phasing out as well. It has a tool for developing passive filters. Uh, there is a small help tool that's being also phased out in favor of uh, uh, read the docs uh, documentation online. There is a matching tool, there is the library, and there is a small resistor to color conversion codes that's uh, useful for students. And there is also a transmission line calculator. In total we have, now it's less, but it was uh, 170 components. We removed some non-GPL components uh, recently, but it's, uh, uh, we are adding new components for RF, so the count is about the same. From the command line, you can access QX, which is the interface, the, the, the schematics. You can uh, use the QX Ater, which is a simulator, and QX Conf, that converts between formats, also imports the Spice Netlist into the QX Ater uh, native uh, Netlist. And we also interface to third-party tools like ASCO, which is an optimizer, ADMS XML, which does the uh, Verilog A to code or C++ conversion that we need to, to run the models. We can run from the, the, the schematic uh, uh, Verilog, free HDL that we are working to replace by, by GHDL, hopefully for the next release, and there are some conversion tools for, from PSPICE to SPICE, and then you can also run, uh, there is a doc where you can run Octave. Uh, directly from, from the, the, uh, the user interface, and Python is mostly scripts so for parsing the data. I will show quickly these uh, screenshots, but I also do a demo in the end. So this is the main interface. You have uh, uh, on the left, the, yeah, you, can, you can have many projects, uh, as many projects as one. This uh, reflects your uh, working directory, uh, it's synced with the, the file system. You can have uh, different contents for each project. And then on the right, you can have either circuits or inline visualization, or you can have also separate tabs only for visualization. So you can make quite nice looking documents to document your, your simulations or models. So we have a component tab where you can drop down most of the built in components. And you have libraries which are uh, either uh, uh, um, spice based or uh, parameterized, uh, parameter parameterization of the built in components. And yeah, as I said, you can have uh, a nice uh, separate uh, documentation or uh, visualization uh, tab for, for documenting, if you like, or simply to look good. A few of the tools, this is uh, merged on the latest release. It's uh, for developing or, or designing active filters. So you input the parameters, and then it uh, visualizes for you the, the schematic. And then on press of calculate and copy to clipboard, you can just paste it into your schematic and, and, and have it running on the simulator. Similarly, you have this passive attenuator, so there is a whole, whole range of uh, topologies that you can, you can uh, input there and get the schematic ready for simulation. We had that, which is the help, very simple, like introductory uh, help that's now migrated to that website. This is going to be removed. Then we have also these matching ports that 
Then you have the library where you have, you can drag and drop the components uh, from this uh, dialog or from, from the doc that you have on the, the user interface. And this is the calculation from colors to value or value to colors. It was okay. Then you have transmission line calculation. There are new components that are coming on for the next release, uh, but it has uh, uh, a dozen of components that can be already now used for transmission lines uh, calculations. Then you have also these passive filters. And as I said, what can you do? You have, you have what can you use from the command line? So the, the user interface can, can be used for generating the netlist from a schematic. It can also uh, print the schematic. And there are some comments to dump the components that we have. So this could help if you are uh, looking to uh, extracting the component descriptions. You can, you can hack into that to, to do it. The simulator supports uh, DC transient AC S parameter. And harmonic balance is just for resistors, uh, capacitors, and inductors at the moment. Uh, I highlighted here as parameter because this is, to my knowledge, one of the only tools that does that on the open source. Uh, uh, it's directly, right? You can do with AC simulations, but this is a built-in feature of the tool that's, uh, uh, it, it's where it started also. Uh, the first commits of the, the, the simulator and the, and the user interface were to accommodate uh, as parameter. And the QuaxConf uh, is a tool that converts between a few formats that uh, I used uh, to visualize or to convert netlists uh, and, and library components. And yeah, this is a bit of the problem that we might talk later on the, on the, the panel, that we have custom file formats for the schematic, which is the same for the library, and also the netlist and the data files, they are plain text files that are also uh, custom. So we might work that, on that to, to Collaboration, it's a bit difficult, it makes more difficult because of that. Um, okay, on the front of Verilog A, we had quite a lot of models. We still have quite a lot of models. However, due to licensing issues, we, we had to remove three of uh, the industry standard models. They were uh, a bit like BSD, three clause licenses which are incompatible, and we stripped them out from the repository we are now moving them to a non-free repository. You got a bit, a bit of a backlash from the model developers, but there is nothing you can do. It's incompatible, we removed. Same thing with ADMS. Uh, there were headers that were proprietary to Accelera, which is the organization that handles the standard. So me and Felix, we, we, we stripped uh, those headers and we rewrote new headers and we relicensed ADMS to as a GPL3 plus and yeah. Uh, concerning VR, uh, Verilog A and, and QX, there is a, a limitation that it, this construct is not yet supported. But uh, for most things, you can compile BSIM 6 and, and some other very complicated models. Okay, they, they run slowly because our engine is, is kind of slow, but it, it runs and it's not, it's, it's mostly accurate compared to, to commercial um, uh, simulators. We might have to compare against GNUCAP now, so. <laughs> And, okay, I have a demo, but I will just close this slide, so I will go as time allows on to the demos. These are the same demos from last year, but just for, for the ones that are here to get a feeling of how the, the tool behaves. So I have this uh, circuit with a parameter sweep, a macro model, optimization. That's a kind of thing that would be interesting to see as an output to a layout tool because these microstrips are basically traces on a PCB or another substrate. So this is something that we could work with a layout tool to, to get it exported. That's quite interesting. Uh, so how, how you can do some very log and VHL simulations. And okay, to wrap up the slides, <coughs> uh, 19, 19 was released, mostly bug fixing, uh, cleanups, ongoing porting from Q3 to Q4. There is this new tool that's the main new thing that we have. We did integration, a bit of regression testing. We removed the non-GPL. We adopted, adopted a new Git 
branching model because before that we were merging everything into master and it was kind of uh, hmm, untidy. Now we have master only for releases and we have develop for development. And on this release cycle we closed uh, roughly 160 issues, regressions and, and things like that. For the next release we coordinated a bit better the, the efforts and we are prioritizing some RF components and microwave components that were developed by Andres. And there is also a tuner uh, feature that you can slide values and rerun the simulation. As I mentioned, removal, removal of Quark's editor and Qx help. We hope for a quick release, but there is also another things that are on the pipeline, like uh, Felix is implementing a, a, a way of loading, similar to GNUCAP, things into the user interface, uh, which might help us on, on, on the future. And this is the, task, the status for the development. And, okay, I just put it here for the PDF. You have all the links you might want here. Uh, this is also interesting. We are now getting more and more translations on this tra translation platform, which is, which is nice, because then helps us on, on localization of the, of the tool. And the final remarks, the project as a whole aims to be very user-friendly. We have advanced components and modeling features. We are open to collaboration. Uh, we, we hope to yeah, use more the tools that we have available and, and enter into the flow of the working flow of uh, more people, and your help is uh, most welcome. I do have uh, a few slide, uh, a few examples I would just show. So as I mentioned, we have this uh, tab here with the projects. Then I have five minutes, right? Just show one example. So ideally, you pick up your components from here. We have a library of components. But this is already configured, so we have on the contents this uh, schematic. I will close this now. So, yeah, this is a simple example where you have, you can enable and disable parameters like that. So in this, this moment, the value of this resistor is being picked up for this, from this equation. These equations can be quite complicated. They are pre-processed and then uh, sent to the simulator. And then you can, yeah run this NAC simulation, you get a short transcript of the solver. And then just like that you can toggle that parameter into a parameter sweep and then rerun it. And then you get this visualization online here. Um, I will show you maybe another project. This I will skip. This is the one I mentioned about microstrips. So this is uh, uh, perhaps not uh, the best frequency. This is for 10 gigahertz, but you can also do microstrips at lower frequencies that can be easily manufactured on PCBs if you if you want. And this is something I would like to see uh, pushed forward on the on, on the layout side. So, and it's quite quick to run. So, this is the SP parameters of this. Uh, Bandpass filter, dark window. Then we have, uh, yeah, the intention, this is a very log, it can also, uh, so in this case we have this uh, very log file here, and here you have the description of the very log, then it wraps it into a, a test bench and it ships it to Icarus and then you can, you can run it. Yeah, it has some warnings because the wrapper is not, <coughs> properly done, but then you have the counter here, it's visualized uh, here. Um, uh, you, I have to fix this. Uh, never tried a small screen, so. And a simple example of Verilog A. Here we have uh, the equations defining uh, are all uh, a resonating tank. Because we don't have the V assignment, we do a trick here to transform the, uh, the, the inductor as a, a, a gyrator, but that's, that's uh, beyond the point. And then you can basically build this model. So it's going to kick in ADMS in the background, generate C code, C++, then run the compiler. And then you can, you predefine the symbol for this uh, text then you can load it, and you can assign an icon to it, 
and then you can now open the schematic. Let me full screen this. So here you have the equivalent in, into primitives, and here you have the equivalent from the Verilog A, and then you can just run it, then it runs some warnings, and yeah, it is just the error from the two curves, but this is the, the idea is to have a very streamlined workflow to load components into into the, u the, the user interface as well into the simulator. But that could be streamlined further because these manual steps, they're not necessary. As um, Felix uh, showed before, we, have, we can have comments on the, your net list that uh, make this machinery all into the simulator itself. So we are uh, working to, to either replace that or to streamline this process. So as a closing note, <clears throat> QX is about schematic and simulation. We don't have any PCB. We don't have the concepts of footprints. So to do that, we have to interact with other projects. And we, if you want to see that happening, please help us. So if you have questions. So the question is, uh, what's, to what degree our custom netlist is compatible to SPICE? Uh, it's not. It's a different format altogether. Uh, worse than that, our components are primitives of our simulator. Our, our components are, or the models are only available at the moment. Some of them are only available into QX. So if you want to run that into a SPICE-like, you have to first move it, the components to a SPICE engine. So it's... It's a dual problem. It's not only the, the net list description, but also the availability of the underlying models that are not there. So, yeah. Can you work with vendor models of or something like that? So for the, yeah, the question is if you can op uh, use uh, vendor models. That depends. If you can import SPICE descriptions, sometimes you can translate into the built-in components of QX, then it, it works. But as long as you have more complicated SPICE descriptions like those poly, some poly functions there, we don't have the conversion built in, so that will not work. So for simple models, yes. Yeah. Do you have a release schedule for removing the QT support? Um, and the question is if we have a schedule for removing the Q3 support. Um, no, because we work on our free time. So the release is ready when it's ready. But it's priority? Not for the next release. The next release is a short one. It's mostly for merging these RF features that Andres needs for his work. So maybe for the next release, well, we have a, I have an experimental branch where most of these uh, Q3 uh, things are removed, but they, are, they, they need work. They need work. They need fine tuning. So maybe one year? <laughs> Uh, can you repeat the question? Um, have you discussed those RF and microwave tools that you plan to add in the next release? So <clears throat> the question is, uh, what are the tools for RF and microwave that are going to be introduced on the next release? I don't know them all, but I know that there is um, a tapered uh, waveguide. There is a circular uh, transmission line, uh, um, a cylindrical transmission line. There are mostly new components. There are no new tools, so to say, but there are new components that are going to be integrated. Going from the from the sort of strip line uh, models that you were looking at with and saying PCB export would be useful. How much would it take to get from where you are now to having a, a sort of transient signal integrity in the simulation? And what kind of data do you need? From so the, the question is about the microstrips. What would it take it to to make a transient signal integrity simulation like? Um, most of the RF components, they are only defined in, uh, in frequency domain. So you would have to have some way of converting that back to time domain. So that's not there. Okay, so if you, want, uh, the, if you extracted some layout from the board, you could do at least a, an RF simulation. So the question is if you extract parameters from the board. If you do a S parameter extraction, you could do signal integrity analysis, for instance. You could do... If you want to analyze, uh, evaluate the signal integrity at the pins of your chip, 
and you do the extraction of that, you get uh, as parameter or uh, yeah, then you, you can do signal integrity on that. I saw uh, people from industry doing that, just that. Uh, one remark, yeah, we had a request to increase the number of ports on, 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 on the SP files that we could handle just to, to run this kind of simulation on, on these uh, multi-pin chips that, uh, that are out there. As a student, my main question is, um, why would I invest time in learning Qt instead of uh, spending time on just standard SPICE? What, what does Qt offer me that SPICE will not? So the question is, uh, why invest time in Qt instead of using uh, SPICE? Uh, note that SPICE is the engine, right? So we have, there is a divide between the schematic entry and the engine, right? So, yeah, if you want to really, <laughs> that's also a problem for me. I don't want to be, I mean, this black hole where you, you dump your schematics, your knowledge, your IP, and you cannot get out anywhere, sorry. So, at the moment, we are working together to, to have this, in, to be able to port one schematic to one, one project or another, as it should be, right? But what can I say? If you, if you need the tools that we have, Maybe other tools don't have it, like the modeling capabilities that we have we, for research, it's interesting. So as a hobbyist that you need to get uh, the models from the internet, my, maybe not, it's not the best use case, but yeah. We're running out of time, but I, I think this will be a subject of discussion mm -hmm. in the discussion session after the next talk. So let's okay. thank Guillermo again. Thank you.